What's going on guys, welcome back. Um, one of the things a lot of people said when we were filming with the battle belts, hey, this does not really do me any good. I'm mostly focused on CCW, so do some videos on CCW. We are going to get into a defensive CCW uh, series, but while we're out here on the range, I just wanna cover a couple things, okay? Just give you some idea of where we're gonna go with it. First and foremost, let's talk about garment selection. I'm not gonna tell you what type of shirts to choose. We have to deal with printing. We have to deal with the type of material. Is it stretch? Is it conforming to the body? Is it button up or the buttons magnetic? Things of that nature, okay? So you just have to buy a garment, test it. I can't tell you how many times that I've purchased something that I really like and it just wasn't something that I wanted to use when I was uh, going to carry a CCW for various reasons. It could be a very tight fit that didn't allow a good strip. It could be the material was similar to this and it was very slick, but I do like this shirt. I hopefully I'm not too late for the trend, you know, with the little Hawaiian style shirts and stuff like that. Maybe people will start liking me a little more if I fit into the trends. But key point here is don't be a trender. Uh, this shirt was given to me by Elevated Silence. I thought I would try it out, liked it, pretty cool. Anyway, so as, for, as far as this shirt, I'm a left-handed shooter, so one of the things you're gonna find in button-up shirts is it overlaps in this manner, left to right. There are some shirts that do have magnetic buttons, so they're tear away. When you're gonna, what you're gonna notice is typically I'm gonna run the bottom or the bottom two buttons undone, okay? I know most people will say, well, it's gonna do something like this if it gets windy. That's not true, okay? It's based on the shirt. All right, and this is gonna allow me to get to my CCW a lot quicker. So let's talk about placement. Are you gonna run appendix? Some of you say, oh my gosh, how dangerous and stupid it is that if you're scared of appendix, don't carry appendix. Carry at the three o'clock, you know, the seven, the five, four, three, whatever you want to carry. The principles do not change as a whole. So do me a favor. Don't say, well, what if I carry at the three o'clock? The principles don't change. It's called strip, positive grip, draw. Just get out there and practice. Too many of you, you want somebody to spoon feed you everything instead of taking a baseline and going out and practicing like we all do. So I'm going to demonstrate appendix. Uh, a lot of people ask what holster. This is uh, Black Art Holsters. I'm not sponsored by them. Um, they just have some really good holsters. I like them. As you can see, I also have a independent magazine carrier. Okay, I do have the side cart as well set up, but this is what I'm running today. I like this because it allows me to move this around a little bit um, more fine-tuned for my body style. When we're talking about stripping, am I going to do a chest tear, a bottom of the shirt tear, whatever the case may be. If I'm standing in this position because as I'm walking around, this is the position that I'm normally in, all right, I'm just going to do what's called a bottom of the shirt tear. I'm going to scoop the bottom of the shirt. Some people would just say leave your hands loose and go ahead and scoop. I'm a firm believer and once you get it scooped, go ahead and clench down on it. And then I'm gonna get this shirt well above the gun, okay? This is gonna allow me to get into a positive grip. How far do you need to come up? Some people will come up all the way here just to ensure that they don't have any issues. If you wanna do that, fine. Okay, what I would recommend you do is just practice with your gun, okay, and body type. One of the things you'll also see that I did is I didn't just come straight up. Depending on what shirt it is, it will hang up like this and prevent you from getting to your gun. So as I scoop, I'm coming over and fish hooking. Hook in here, okay? When we're talking about getting a good grip on the gun, so we're gonna go ahead and act like we went through the bottom of the shirt tear. <sighs> Depending on your body style, I suck in slightly and I just come in up against the body all right, the stomach, get a positive grip, and then I just simply create the draw stroke. Nothing really changes on presentation from a side holster versus here, except for the first few inches. So what I do is I grab it, I instantly come to this reference point. It's very quick. Reference point is for me, this part of my hand is actually touching the rib cage where it starts curving down. Reference point, marry, and I push out. Same thing here. I draw reference point on the way and then I push out. Nothing changes as a whole. Here's something that I learned from uh, 
a pastor friend of mine, Barrett Fallbush, Trexodus on uh, Instagram. You guys may know who he is. Give him a follow. Really good guy. Definitely somebody you want in your corner just in general as a human being. Awesome person. He learned this, and I understand the principle, and I'm not knocking it. I want to show you this and talk about the concept versus what issue I see in the world. What they do is they'll come in and they'll put their thumb on the back of the slide here. Now what this does is it creates tension in this muscle, which creates tension in the tendons in the finger, which just makes you subconsciously aware of your trigger finger, which ties into the Black Hawk Serpa holster. Everybody started throwing fits about the Black, uh, Black Hawk uh, Serpa holster saying how crappy it is. Well, it's interesting that I've never met a seal kill himself with it. Why is that? Okay, it's not the holster. It's you guys trying to jump on a trend, buying a holster, not training properly, and shooting yourself. End of story. They put their thumb back here as they create that draw stroke. All they're doing is pushing the thumb back around to the opposite side of the gun and creating that contact point between the webbing and your beaver tail, okay? Thumb on the back. As I draw, it creates that tension in the tendon, which makes me subconsciously aware of that index finger, that trigger finger. As I'm pushing out, thumb will simply slide around before I get to full presentation, and then I get my sights on target. So again, the problem I have with this is not that it don't work. People are creating solutions to fix problems that can be fixed. It's very similar to temple index. When I see people do this, it shows me that they have some skill set, but it also, there's some incompetency there, most likely. The reason why these guys teach you to tie it to the head, because where the body goes, the hand goes. It's not moving independently. The way I teach shooters to move is this is all independent. I should be able to move around you and talk change my magazine, bring my gun down, and never flag anyone. Never put my finger on the trigger. If you can't do this, practice this, okay? It's great that it allows you to apply an extra level of safety and take some classes, but when guys do this in classes where they're running upward, what happens when they get out of a vehicle? You just pointed your gun potentially at an instructor or other students that are standing behind this firing line. So it makes you run up like this, down the side of a car exposing your head. Threat, 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 threat. Look to the back of the car, work high. So it's building a bad habit altogether, and we want to avoid that. All right, so what does that mean? If I get out of a vehicle, I engage, bang, 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 I open the door, and my gun's here. It's independent. I consciously bring the gun up because I know there's somebody there, but it allows me to get behind the vehicle and not get shot. We'll get into that as we progress in our training. What I would recommend you do as we go through that shirt tear, suck in if you can, get a positive grip, create that draw stroke, and you have no issues. If you're the type of person who wants to put your hand on the back of the slide, by all means, go for it. So what if we are closer to this threat? I'm being bullied or somebody wants to fight me or whatever. I'm not down here, my hands are here. So now we do what's called a chest tear. The last thing I wanna do is be here and then go for the bottom of the shirt, exposing the core, okay? Because here's the thing, if I'm drawing that gun, what has already happened? They've already swung on me, they pulled a knife, they're going for the gun, they got a stick. The last thing I want to do is expose this and get hit or anything like that. So we're here, we're talking to them, whatever, we just relax instantly. All I'm doing is I'm pushing the elbow up to come in and to protect myself here from strikes. At no point should you follow these guys on the internet and draw your gun point blank range. We'll talk about that later. So I'm here as I'm backing up, shirt tear, get it up enough to where I can get a positive grip. I can protect myself if I need to and go through your draw stroke. Hey man, I don't want any problems. He begins to lunge at me, strike, or I back up, whichever. I go through my strikes, shirt tear, protect. Nothing changes on the draw stroke. What you'll see guys do is they'll be face to face. They're here and they're like, hey man, and they go for the bottom of the shirt. 
If I have not created that safe distance between me and them, you're opening yourself up to get knocked out. We want to avoid that. I'm here. There's no reason to go all the way to the bottom of the shirt. It's here. Let's talk about one-handed shooting. Does it really change? Not really, because guess what? The garment has to come up for me to get positive control on the grip. So all I'm doing is coming up, pinning the shirt or garment behind this part of the hand, or however you can get it. It doesn't have to be exact. Here, pin, push down, and go through your presentation. Now what you're gonna notice is part of my shirt is caught between my grip and the bottom of my palm, watch. You'll see guys say on videos, oh my God, you got your shirt, that's dangerous. Yes and no, okay? If I get the shirt caught in front of the gun and I push out and I'm hung up, it can be dangerous, okay? But if I'm dealing with the simple issue of here, I come down and I have a crap ton of the garment between my hand and the grip, how do we get out of this? Relax your hands and push out. Now you can see I still got a good positive grip, I'm just not monkey gripping it. Very simple thing, okay? I would also train to do that. So I'm going to short stroke it. I'm gonna short stroke it, come in, get a positive grip, but you can see I've got my shirt entangled. Go through your draw stroke. And as I'm pushing out, all I'm doing is this right here. Releasing what needs to be released. Readjust so I can get into the fight. As I push out, I'm simply relaxing and I go to presentation. So don't freak out if you grab your shirt. Up, down, fall into presentation. For your magazine, everything remains the same here as far as engaging, stripping your magazine, if you want to do the gravity assist method, whatever, okay? But as I come back to this magazine, I'm releasing, look at the shirt tear right here. What did I do? Exact same thing I did over here. I tear, pin against the back of the hand. And what I would recommend, you can see that the thumb is going behind the magazine. All right, so let's put this into practical application. So I'm standing here, I'm walking, whatever. My hands are down, okay? It doesn't really matter what I'm doing. This is just the position I'm in, okay? So I'm going to go to the bottom of the shirt tear. Get it up, your strong hand. Go ahead and put your thumb up against the stomach. Go down, get a good tight grip. Be cautious of this index finger that you're not pushing in because if I'm pushing in, boom, it slips in, hits that trigger. You could shoot yourself and uh, you're gonna be identifying as potentially transgender for the rest of your life. All right, so pin, pin, grip. Go through your draw stroke presentation. Bang, bang, easy day. All right, here's a topic um, that has nothing to do with this video. Hayden and I were just talking about this. This is actually the first day that I've really got to run the 365 macro by SIG. Um, you haven't seen it, but this has had multiple failures to eject, okay? Stove pipes. And right now I'm running 124 grain, uh, just FMJs. I've ran 80 grain like plus plus P 1450 to 1550 feet per second and it's still having issues. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up to 124 grain. And it's due to most likely the compensation. I believe Hayden said, um, I don't watch videos. He said a lot of people were, or some people were talking about having this same issue. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so um, I love this gun overall, but at the end of the day, when I get done with the break-in period, if even the 124 grain still has stove pipes every now and then that is related due to the compensation. This gun goes away and I'm gonna go back to uh, Glock. But overall, I love this gun. Um, once again, it goes back to the trends, man. Don't fall into a trend. What you do is you buy a gun based on what somebody else tells you, the marketing aspect, and you end up wasting your money a lot of the times, okay? And this is why I like Glock. Glock is tried and true, so is SIG on certain conditions, but when you start doing stuff like this, um, you're most likely going to start running into issues. But overall, it's a really good gun. We'll, ch we'll see how it uh, functions after the break-in period. So hope you guys like the video. Just practice. Remember, I'm gonna reiterate this one more time. Go teacher slow. All right.
turtle slow and about 90% of what you do until you master all of that, that speed, then start picking up the speed. Maybe like five to 10% each time. Have a great day and God bless.